So at the beginning of my career, I, it was pretty typical, traditional actuarial uh, development. I was an actuarial student at a large life and health insurance company in Toronto, and that's really what got me excited about actuarial science. I was a summer student and then uh, and so committed to it full time. And I worked there for 12 years. I had excellent experience. The company loved me, I loved them. I went to Ireland for four years with them and qualified as an actuary. And I really enjoyed the actuarial science aspect, uh, the technical nature of it. And I'm very curious, so I love applying the actuarial ideas to different problems. So I was often assigned to um, places that needed to be fixed or to be built from scratch. So I was able to really um, build on my creativity when, uh, when I was there. So you did that for more than a decade, progressing I'm sure as, as actuaries do, and then you took another route. So what, what was your thinking as you were considering the next phase of your career? So, so after a decade of doing, doing that, uh, actually it was the year 2000 was coming up and that's the time I think when a lot of people actually, it was like having a big birthday, you kind of often thought about your career, what was I going to do with my life and I realized that I actually wanted to run a company and I also realized that the company I was at, and just in general, large life and health insurance company, it, it didn't really suit my nature to work in a company like that. And so I thought about what was I going to do about that because I'm a very loyal person and loved where I was at but also realized it wasn't going to work for me in the long term. And so I assumed I needed to get out of insurance. So I committed to getting an MBA and ended up at the Wharton School of Business to do that. And uh, when I was there, a friend's cat got sick and she spent over $5,000 on her cat, which uh, back in 2001 uh, was a lot of money and that was even after a student discount. And she said to herself, gosh, I should have had pet insurance because she'd come directly from the United Kingdom to go to Wharton. And when she looked at what was available, because she hadn't had it for that particular incident, incident. she realized that what was available in the US was very uh, minimal and very poorly done, particularly compared to the United Kingdom where at the time 12% cats and dogs were insured and she'd had insurance before she'd come, she just hadn't picked it up in the, the US. Less than half a percent cats and dogs insured and only maybe three brands available at the time. So she had come to Wharton to build a company and she thought maybe a pet insurance uh, company would be a good uh, place to start. So long story short, four of us together put together a business plan for the business plan competition on the concept of pet insurance. And uh, in 2003, we put that forward. But in the research of doing that, I realized that here was something that I could create from scratch because there was no actuarial science applied to pet insurance. It was a very naively priced product uh, and very poorly done and I thought this is an opportunity for me to apply actuarial science to a, uh, a, a, I guess a, a growing you know an industry with high potential and but could really use an actuarial touch and also um, I was very much more interested in the it's the total picture, the holistic picture of pet insurance, the customer experience, the pet parent experience, um, the actuarial science, so feeling that we have a product that would uh, fit for everybody, that you can make money on, but actually work. <laughs> and, uh, and so anyway, we won the business plan competition, and so 2003 graduated and decided, yes, this was something I really wanted to do. I could. I didn't realize I was going to run my own company um, with two people in it to start with, uh, but it's been an incredibly rewarding experience. And do you have a team of actuaries working with you now? Uh, so I've since left Embrace, uh, but uh, that's after 14 years of running it. Uh, we have some actu we have an actuarial student and an actuarial analyst. 
uh, working at Embrace. And we partner with uh, an insurance company, and they have a team that focuses on, um, on pet insurance. It's actually a property casualty product. So during my time uh, at Embrace, I've had to learn how to speak property casualty <laughs> because it's quite different than life and health. There's quite a difference between the mentality of property casualty, which tends to be much more short term and it has a completely different uh, set of terminology and perspective than life and health, which tends to be you know, 100 years perspective and a uh, very you know, different way of looking at things. So that's been an interesting crossover for me. So you took a very non-traditional route, obviously, after um, some traditional, uh, traditional roles. As you kind of look out at the broad landscape, where are some other opportunities, untapped opportunities for actuaries, do you think? What sort of business areas or, or other areas do you think are calling for that skill set and that way of thinking? So I believe that there are so many opportunities for actuaries who have a twist of creativity, and that's that's the, the key. It's easy, uh, as actuaries, I do think that our t traditional training has been to follow a lot of rules because that's you know what uh, what we have to to work with in many cases, and so but the skills that actuaries have allow us to take unformed data and create insights uh, from that, and so that allows us uh, to do so many things. So even within insurance right now, there's a whole revolution taking place, whether you've noticed it or not, and I suppose you might call it the insure tech uh, revolution. And I think actuaries can have a huge impact on that because it's not just a case of minimizing processes. It's actually also a case of having insight into the policyholder or the, the pet parent equivalent or someone out there who is trying to interact with your, uh, with your company. And I think actuaries can really bring insight of of the data and the information to insight in the person, the human being on the other side. And that is like the, the, uh, a new frontier that I think actuaries can have a really big impact on. Do you see any challenges or obstacles in, um, in getting there? Are there, are, there um, are there people who don't accept or realize or understand what it is that actuaries can bring to um, to their organization. Maybe some people in the C-suite who don't don't think of actuaries in that way. So I, I think the one big hurdle for the for actuaries being involved in this sort of new frontier is the actuaries themselves. Actually, uh, yes, there are challenges with other people's perceptions of actuaries, but the fact is that's not their problem, that's yours. That's something that uh, actuaries, we have to get out there and show what actuaries can do. Actuaries can be very creative and uh, insightful. And so go ahead and do that. Go and push into uh, projects and roles that you, you know, actuaries typically don't do, but you can see that you will bring a lot of value. Don't be worried about not having done it before. That, that's that's kind of irrelevant. Just to bring your natural skills and your creativity and your curiosity to a role and people soon forget you're an actuary and it won't really matter either way. When people think of actuaries, how should they think of that, them as risk analysts? Or analyzing risk? Right. Actuaries as risk analysts is kind of an interesting concept because um, there is the data aspect. Actuaries are very good at being technical with data and that's obviously a huge benefit these days. Uh, not, not so many people, they can, they can use data <clears throat> it, it, as it is, but actuaries can really understand what it is and what it means. And so I think there's a big benefit to actuaries uh, looking at data because it's the value add, it's the insights that really matter. That's what's very really important. Actuaries who are thinking about 
ways to expand their their knowledge, their insights. What would you advise them to do? You you pursued an MBA, for instance. Are there other credentials, for instance, that um, people might want to want to pursue if they're looking to to broaden their um, their opportunities professionally? So I believe that actuaries can enhance their uh, credentials. I mean, I got an MBA. I felt that I needed it for many reasons, not just the learning. Um, it helped expand me into a whole different area. But I, I, I believe that if you're trying to get into a, a domain, then it's handy to help yourself to have whatever credential is required for that domain or is led. So, for example, I work with the investment department in my insurance company, and so I became a CFA because that was something that they respected, but it also taught, taught me a lot about their business. Uh, so there are many reasons for it. I, you know, having a, 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 a Sarah CERA designation, I think, is something that's much more helpful going forward for if you're going to look at technical, technical work in an insurance perspective and outside of insurance. That's something that people are understanding more and more.